Assalamualaikum as we greet you from the studios of the Islamic Broadcasting Network here in my Caribbean island of Trinidad with Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Peace be with you wherever you are in the world and here in Trinidad and Tobago. We apologize for the late start this morning and we pray that Allah may bless this session that we have today with us. We don't know how long we can have chance to continue to teach, but while still there's life, we must teach, provide guidance. Uh, today, I would like to first of all make mention that uh, we are proceeding with the effort to try to mint gold and silver coins, dinar and dirham, here in the Masajid, who are of pioneering effort. But if you would like to join our effort, your masjid or your mandir or your church, I would like to join with us in efforts minting gold, making them available to people at a no profit, profit non commercial basis. Uh, you do please uh, contact the, the IBN, contact IBN and inform them, and IBN will then carry a message to the people who. Minting, making the effort to mint. Uh, secondly, that uh, today I prefer if you do not make any calls, either from Trinidad or from abroad, until I complete what I want to do before you start your calls, inshallah. What I would like to do today is, first of all, uh, to remind, remind you that I will soon be traveling and let uh, travel is all too dangerous for me. So, do please. Do please, do please remember me in your du'a that Allah might take me safely, that Allah might bring me safely back to my home. I'll be away for, for four months. I'll be traveling to Britain um, and uh, to France and to Switzerland, uh, to Pakistan and to the city of Belgrade and perhaps also to Bunyalaka. Uh, that's how it's pronounced, Bunyalaka, uh, in Bosnia. Belgrade in uh, Serbia, uh, where my book on methodology for the study of the Quran has been translated to the, the Serbian language. We continue. The Serbian language, and uh, we're going to have the uh, the. Uh, launch of the book, inshallah, in Belgrade. Uh, so we'll just take a little break and we'll get with you in a moment, inshallah. the leading manufacturers of vermicelli split piece powder and grease proof paper we also manufacture a variety of paper and plastic bags we have bags for french fries sandwiches popcorn supermarkets stores and much more whatever your needs trust chic Leisha limited for quality products chic Leisha limited warrenville Konupia. telephone 665-3336 Guys, for the break, there was a technical problem. It, I hope, been resolved now. So, I was saying that uh, my book on methodology for the study of the Quran has been translated to the Serbian Bosnian language and published in Belgrade. And I'm going to Belgrade for the launch of the book. 
and the launch will take place, it has now been confirmed, the launch will take place at the University of Belgrade in the auditorium. So if you are in Bosnia, you are in Albania, you are in Kosovo, you are in Macedonia, you are anywhere around, and you want to drive over to Belgrade, you are most welcome. Just look to my website for the date of the launch and the time of the launch at the University of Belgrade. Now, today I'd like to take two subjects that I were brought to my attention in previous sessions, and I didn't have the time to respond to them. One was a call from India on the subject of the law of divorce in Islam, and the other last week was a call from Canada on the subject of Gog and Magog. So let us first deal with these two subjects, and uh, then we can return to your calls on uh, how to respond to uh, this tremendously dangerous uh, age in which we now live, and paper money is now going to be demonetized, and we are all going to be trapped, la masha Allah, in uh, digital and electronic money and currencies. And I have been asking, and I have been be pleading with you, I've been begging you, please, please, please go to the scholars of Islam. Please go to the Muftis, please go to the Maulanas, please go to the Ustad, please go to the Shuyukh of this age, particularly the established scholars and ask them. Our people need guidance. Is it halal or is it haram? Fine. Is it halal? the guidance in an offhand way. We need it in the form of a fatwa in which you provide the proof from the Quran and from the Sunnah. If you do not give it to us because you cannot give it to us, you could at least tell us where we can get guidance. Is there no one in the whole world of Islam who can guide us? If it is halal, come on, give us the fatwa that it is halal to use bitcoins. Come on, Subjects I want to uh, share with you today, the one on divorce from India, because the Indian Supreme Court has ruled that a triple pronouncement of divorce, a triple three times pronouncement of divorce, does not qualify as a divorce. And uh, the, the people of India are surprised. Some of them are hurt, others are bewildered what to do because uh, they always had this belief that once you make three pronouncements of divorce in Islam, that's it. She's now divorced within one minute or maybe a minute.
حق تخلیه yourself from your brother Muslim over a hadith which is low in state. Should I repeat that? You will not divide yourself from brother Muslim. You will not pick up boxing gloves. You will not create a new sect or new movement which divides the Muslims on the basis of a hadith which is neither in conflict nor in harmony with the Quran which has a lower status. I can't be more plain and clear than that. So what is the law of divorce in the Quran? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about divorce that he permits it twice. That he permits divorce twice. At-talaqu marratan. At-talaqu marratan. He permits you divorce to divorce twice. But after that, if you divorce, then and only then after the third divorce, now he will not allow you to remarry. So he allows you to remarry after the first divorce. He allows you to remarry after the second divorce, but he does not allow you to remarry after the third divorce. Because this is not a game. Will they listen to me? The scholars of Islam, before they go in the grave and they're questioned in the grave, will you listen to me one more time? Allah permits you to remarry after one divorce. Allah permits you to remarry after a second divorce. But Allah does not permit you to remarry after the divorce. He must remarry someone else. He must marry someone else. And if that marriage ends, then, and she is free, only now can you remarry her after the divorce. So Allah is pleased. Don't you have any common sense? Will you not think? that Allah is pleased when a divorced couple remarry and a broken home is mended again and the children will have papi and mommy once more. Is that so difficult for you to understand? How many times must we keep on knocking on the door of your understanding? This is what the Quran is. It is a law of divorce that is wise. Did you hear me? It is a law of divorce that is kind and compassionate. Are you listening to me? I'm sorry that I have to put so much emotion into this. Because this, they, they, they would not listen. They would not listen. No, it's as though their minds are blocked. Absolutely blocked and they will not listen. This is the Quran. And if you misrepresent the Quran, you're going to have to pay for it in the grave. Allah speaks in the Quran. Ask any Jew and he'll tell you the law. It's the same thing. So the husband makes a pronouncement. When he makes a pronouncement, does, mean, does it mean that he's divorced? Oh, no, you have to take a, a buy a one-way ticket to the moon and don't come back at all if you believe in that nonsense. 
Is she divorced when you make a pronouncement of divorce? You don't even have the knowledge worthy of a garbage bin if you believe that. No. A pronouncement of divorce is not the same of a, as a divorce, you dum-dum. A pronouncement of divorce indicates a process. And all you have to do is make one pronouncement. Unless you are dum-dum, you make it 1,000 times. Only a dum-dum will do that. Once you make one pronouncement of divorce, the process initiated. You don't need two and three and four and five and six and seven. One pronouncement of divorce is sufficient to initiate the process. But that's too difficult for them to understand. Ah, yes, what can we do? It's difficult to be a scholar of Islam today, yes. When you made the pronouncement of divorce, then the, a period of three, three menstrual cycles must take place. And after the third menstrual cycle, take, if you have not withdrawn the pronouncement of divorce, then after that, she's no longer your wife. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need a court. You don't need a judge. You don't need no marriage counsel. You don't need no divorce counsel. No. Once you made the pronouncement of divorce, are you listening to me? And three menstrual cycles have taken place. And you have not withdrawn the pronouncement of divorce. Then at the t when the third menstrual cycle takes place, after that she is no longer your wife. That's it. But, if you regret it and you want to take her back, then the wise and the kind and the compassionate law of divorce in the Quran permits you to take her back as a wife. Is that so difficult for you to understand? When will you wake up? Yes, when will you wake up? In your grave you'll wake up. And after you take her back, you can remarry her. Yes, Allah is pleased, pleased when divorced couples come back together. Yes. And if you take her back, you remarry her. And again, you have problems, and again, you make a pronouncement of divorce. You initiate the process. And at the end of the process, if you have not withdrawn the pronouncement of divorce, now she's no longer your wife. Now she's no So you've had two divorces, yes. After that, Allah still allows you to take her back if you want to remarry her, because he says divorce is permitted twice. It is when you take her back, you remarry her. And now again there are problems, and again you make a pronouncement of talaq. Now, that's it, says Allah. That's it. Now she's no longer your wife, and you cannot play games with the law of divorce. If you want to take her back as a wife, the condition is she has to marry someone else. And when that marriage ends, then you can marry, remarry her. This is the law of divorce in the Quran. This is a wise and compassionate law of divorce in the Quran. It's different from Hinduism, where you do not have a divorce. No, Hinduism does not permit a divorce. No. It's different from the Roman Catholic Church, which does not permit a divorce. No. We are different in Islam. Allah permits a divorce. Yes, he permits it. When we leave the Quran, and we go to the hadith, then we find in the hadith that the Prophet said, of all the things that Allah permitted, that which he hates the most is a divorce. So you don't play games with a divorce. No, you must have a very valid reason before you divorce a wife. If there are grounds for a divorce, and, he, and she wants a divorce, and he is not willing to give her the divorce, then she can go to the cardi or the judge, yes. And he can then pronounce a divorce or force him to pronounce a divorce, yes. But that's not our subject today. 
you must have adequate grounds to divorce a wife. Otherwise, Allah hates a divorce. Uh, the throne of Allah shakes with a divorce. Why? Because of the immense suffering for children, broken homes and broken hearts. And those broken homes and broken hearts could lead to robbery and violence, can lead to drug addiction, could lead to sexual promiscuity, could lead to all kinds, alcoholism, all of these things can come from a broken home. Yes. Look at Trinidad today, collapsing. Now then, we come to a hadith in which a man came to the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and said, O Messenger of Allah, I have made three pronouncements of divorce. That's what he said. I have made three pronouncements of divorce, which could take less than a minute. Less than a minute. And the hadith says that the Prophet ﷺ was angry but accepted the three equivalent to three divorces and Imran Hussein is saying that belongs to a garbage bin. This is Imran Hussein saying. Yes, I am saying it. That that is not a valid hadith. That is in conflict with the Quran. It is wicked, it is false, it belongs to a garbage bin. And I will have to answer in the grave for the words that I've just used. You don't have to answer for me, I have to answer. Because I know what I'm speaking. This is the correct thing. How, how can three pronouncements issued over a period of one minute, or one day, or two days, or one week, be equivalent to three divorces. Even a schoolboy in short pants will know that is not correct. But yet you uphold the hadith. Don't you have any sense in your head? And so when the Supreme Court of India declared that this is not a valid divorce, the Supreme Court in India was exploiting an opportunity created through a fabricated hadith. And the scholars of Islam in India could not recognize it was a fabricated hadith. This is one of the tests of Akhir Zaman. One of the tests and trials of end, the end time is to be able to sift through a fabricated hadith and recognize that they are fabricated hadith. And if you can't do that, you're not competent to guide the people. In the end time, you can't even see that the paper money is bogus and fraudulent and haram, and you want to be a guide to the people. Well, let me tell you something. Let me warn the scholars of Islam that the Prophet ﷺ prophesied. I'm sorry to keep my finger like this for you. I'm sorry, I don't like it, but I have to do it. Let me warn you. And let me warn you one more time. That the Prophet Allah's blessings be upon him prophesied. He said the time will come when nothing will remain of Islam but the name. Hadith is in the Sunnah of Bayhaqi. It is narrated by Ali radiallahu ta'ala. I don't need to quote the Arabic. That the time will come when nothing will remain of Islam but the name. And nothing will remain of the Quran but the traces of the writing. So the reason why... The reason why nothing will remain of Islam but the name is because we betray the Quran. That's why we betray the Quran. We will not go to the Quran. For that which the Quran provides to explain to us Akhiru Zaman, the end time. When nothing remains of Islam but the name, that has to be the end time. The hadith goes on to say. At that time, masajiduhum amiratun wa hiya kharabu min al huda that the masajid, plural of masjid, will be grand structures, iron and steel, multi million dollar buildings, but devoid of guidance. Which guidance? The masajid will be devoid of guidance. Which, which, which guidance? Answer. The guidance with which to be able to respond to the fitna, the test and trials of Akhiru Zaman. Every time Allah tests you in the end time, every time Allah tests you, 
There is guidance in the Quran how to respond to that test. You are celebrating. You are going into large gatherings for Milad and Nabi. Have you gone to the Quran? To look in the Quran for the tests and trials of Akhiru Zaman? Have you done that? One of the tests and trials of Akhiru Zaman is money. Yes, money. Do you think you'll be left alone? In the grave, you're going to have to answer. Yes. They will question you in the grave about paper money. They will question you in the grave on the electronic money and cryptocurrency. You better prepare yourself for the grave. They are not going to tell you that. The fair dodo, they're sleeping. But I am telling you, prepare for the grave. Masajiduhum amiratun wahiya kharabu min al huda. The masajid will be grand structures but devoid of guidance. Ulama'uhum sharrul nasi mimman tahta adim is sama. And the scholars of Islam of that age, the ulama. Sorry, we can't take your calls now. Hold on, we can't take your calls now from the United States. Please hold on. The ulama. The people die. The worst people beneath die. Because of them, the people will be in state of fitna, that which causes distress to them, a test and a trial for them. That is, just, that is what the Prophet ﷺ prophesied. So what I've done to you just now is to explain to you the law of divorce and the Quran, and I pray that it will be a benefit to you. Uh, let's just take this one call from the United States, but no more after this, please. Yes, hello? Uh, Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam, Matullah. Oh, wow, it's such a pleasure to be uh, speaking with you. Um, I'm calling from the United States. I had a question regarding um, the debt system um, and student, uh, student loans. Hello? D-A-T-H. The debt system in Surat al Um. Well, yes, basically, uh, there's a lot of students that take on student loans and without realizing they're going pretty much to be enslaved All right, by okay. All right. the student system. Loan, the debt system. Let me answer you now. Sorry, we don't have much time. The answer is to be located, the answer is located in Surah Al-Baqarah. That if someone lends money to you. It is not Qad Hasana, which is a charitable loan. It is Dain, which is a business loan or a commercial loan. There's a difference between a charitable loan, which is Qad Hasana, and a business or a commercial loan, which is Qad. If it is a charitable loan and you do not have the means to repay the loan, it is written off. But student loans are not charitable loans. Now, student loans are business loans or commercial loans where there is an obligation to repay, a legal obligation to repay. Good. So it is yeah. kar, not kar hasana. It is Sorry, it is dain. You'll find... Check, this, Hello, let me please answer. Let me finish your answer, please. Sorry. A student loan is not Qad Hasana or a charitable loan. A student loan given by governments is a dain or a commercial loan or a business loan. That's, the, that's my answer to you. Number two, if it is a business loan or a commercial loan, you have a legal obligation to repay. And if you cannot repay, then the, the, the creditor has the right to demand that your property be taken from you. And if you are bankrupt, you don't have the means to repay, then everything that you own is taken from you, including your house, including your car, everything, to repay the creditor. It's different from the bankruptcy laws of the United States. Finally, if it is a loan on interest, and you're supposed to not only repay the loan, but also repay the interest, 
then the Quran says the interest is haram. But, but the creditor has the right to be repaid the capital sum which he lent. Walakum ru'usu amwalikum. So you have a legal obligation to repay a student loan. The legal obligation extends to the loan itself and not to the interest. This is my answer to you. Any other question? Uh, yeah, Sheikh. I was just wondering, in a time like this, when we're pretty much left to the best thing to do is make hijra, how would we go about that if, we, if I fear for myself and my family that remaining <clears throat> in a place like this will pretty much destroy um, right. our iman, our okay. Islam, and hijra is okay. the best... All the right. best so this, um, this question now, no, no more questions after this, okay? This okay. question okay. is different from the student loan question. That's the two sep separate subjects now, okay? When you recognize that a, living in a particular place is a danger to your faith and for the faith of your family, then Allah's command in the Quran is Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Protect yourselves and protect your families from the fire. This is a command in the Quran. What you will do is to seek to make hijra out of that land. Get out of the land. But now it's difficult because around the world there are laws, immigration laws. The, the earth is no longer recognized to belong to Allah. No. Every country now has territorial sovereignty over their part of the earth. And unless you have a resident permit or resident visa or work permit or citizenship, you cannot go to reside in another country. No. Then what do you do if you cannot go to another country? Answer, you seek refuge in the remote countryside of the land in which you are living. Go to the remote countryside Produce your own food, excuse me, get some animals, so you have milk and you have meat and you have vegetables that you produce, produce, and try to live a life in which you are disconnected from the godless you, world. Okay? Even if you owe the even if you stole all those um all those loans back. Uh if you want to withdraw from the city and your wife and children do not want to withdraw then leave them and go if the wife wants to withdraw and the husband does not want to go let her go and leave him behind if you're on board a ship and the ship is sinking and those of which you don't want to get off the ship and you remain on board with them then when the ship sinks you will sink with them but if you get off the ship and you're in a place of safety then there's a chance that you can get them to also get off the ship and join you. So whatever you have to do, make sure you get out of the cities, go to the remote countryside, produce your own food, have your own milk and meat. If you are a community large enough to form a market, form a market where you'll use dinar and dirham for buying and selling. Or you can also have barter for buying and selling. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't devote any more time to your question from the United States. Because we still have a subject of Gog and Magog. And we don't have any more calls for today, please. No more calls for today. Uh, a question from Canada about Gog and Magog, and I have to be very fast now. Uh, the Arabs in Mecca did not know how to deal with a man from amongst their midst who was truthful. They called him al -Amin now declared that he's a prophet of Allah. So they sent a delegation to the northern city of Yatrib, where there's a large community of Jews and rabbis. How can we tell whether he is indeed a prophet of God, like unto Moses and Abraham and so on? The rabbis responded by saying, ask him these three questions which only, only, only a prophet can answer. No historian can answer it. No scholar can answer it. Only a prophet. And if he answers them correctly, then you will know he is indeed a prophet. But the, ans the rabbis did not give them the answers. They only gave them the questions. Question number one was ask him about the great traveler. 
who traveled to the two ends of the land. And question two was about a cave, and question three was about the roof. But we're not dealing with that now. We're dealing with question one. Allah repeated the question in the Quran when he sent down the answer. And the, the, the answer is to be found in Surah Al-Kaf. And they question thee. The rabbis are questioning thee. O oh, Muhammad, that was about full karnayn. Someone who impacts on two karns. Two karns, karnayn. A karn can mean a horn, or a karn can mean an age or an epoch or a generation. Which one is it? The one who impacts, who possesses two horns, or who impacts on two ages or two generations? Which one is it? The answer is to be found in the Quran. That every time Allah uses the word karn in the Quran, he always means generation or age or epoch and never, never, never means horn. So Zul Karnain is someone who impacts on two ages, two ages, two epochs, two generations. He's someone who has faith. He's someone who's endowed with power. Allah gave him power. And he has the power to pursue whatever objective he chooses to pursue. And so he travels in the direction of the setting of the sun, which is meaning traveling west. Until he came to a body of water. And that body of water is dark and murky. Dark and murky. The commentators of the Quran, I don't have the time to give you all the evidence and produce all the arguments to identify the, the, the body of water for you. I simply have to say to you, the commentators of the Quran, like Ibn Kathir, recognize it as the Black Sea. The Black Sea, yes, the Black Sea and Crime, the Crimea, the peninsula called Crimea is located in the Black Sea, commanding the whole of the Black Sea. You control Crimea, you control the Black Sea. So there, at that body of water, he came across a people. And Allah asked him in the Quran, how are you going to treat them? You have power, you have faith. When power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? When power rests on the foundations of faith, how is power used? Zulkarnain responds and says, those who are guilty of acts of volum, wickedness, oppression, injustice, I will use my power to punish them. And when they return to you, you will also punish them. And so when power rests on foundations of faith, a world order is established which will be in harmony with the world above. And then Zulkarnay went on to say that those who have faith and are righteous in conduct, I will reward them and treat them nicely. So a world order based on power which rests on the foundations of faith will be a world order which will assist the religious way of life. Assist and help and protect those who have righteousness of conduct and faith in their hearts. Then Zulkarnain traveled in the opposite direction. And obviously, if he stops here at a body of water, then over there he stops at a body of water as well because he goes to the rising of the sun. He doesn't, drive, he doesn't travel endlessly, no. And there he comes across the people. Lam naja'allahum min duniha sitra. Lam naja'allahum min duniha sitra. A people for whom we had provided nothing, Nothing, nothing to cover them other than what they had. Meaning, and Allah knows best, a people living the primitive way of life. Zulkarnain had the wisdom, the kindness, the compassion to leave them undisturbed, leave them as they were. And then Zulkarnain and Allah says, we understood 
his response. And then Zulkarnain travel in a third direction, but the rabbis had only asked about two. But the Quran provided the third, the third direction, because Allah knew this is what the rabbis wanted, not the first and the second, they wanted the third. And he came to a body, a, a mountain, range of mountains, with a pass between them, one pass between them. That was the Black Sea, therefore that's the Caspian Sea. And in between the Black and the Caspian Sea is an unbroken chain of mountains, the Caucasus Mountains. Yes. And in between the Caucasus Mountains, there's only one pass called the Dariel Gorge. And there he came across a people, Zulkarnain, Lam Naj'al La Yakaduna Yafkahuna Kaula, whose language could not be understood. They had a unique language, different from all other languages in that area. That's the Georgian language up to this day. When they were able to communicate with each other, the people said to Zulkarnain, in the Ya'juja wa Ma'juja Mufsiduna Filat, that Gog and Magog are committing fasad in our land. Fasad is that which corrupts to the extent that it can destroy. Fasad is that which corrupts to the extent that it can destroy. Fasad. And Allah reserved the greatest punishment of all in the hudud for fasad. Can you help us build a barrier to protect us from Gog and Magog? We are prepared to pay you. Gog and Magog. Nabi Muhammad now alayhi salatu wasalam, tells us Gog and Magog, not only are they people who commit fasad, but only human beings can commit fasad. Angels cannot commit fasad, no. And the jinn cannot commit fasad. We'll see why. We'll see why in a moment. It cannot be the jinn here. It has to be human beings. The Prophet said about Gog and Magog, they are an ummah, a banu adam, human beings. Not some strange creatures living underneath the earth with 3,000 ears and 4,000 noses. You dumb them? No, they're human beings. In the Ajuja, in Ajuja the, Mufsiduna fil up. Gog and Magog are committing fasad in our land. Can you help us? We'll pay you. Build a barrier. Zulkarnay said, I don't need your money. No, no. Just help me with manpower. And instead of building a barrier, he built a radam. Not a sad, he built a radam. And it was in the shape of the size of a shell. Sadafain. The two sides of the mountain were like Sadafain, the two sides of a shell. And he built a dam. And now when he built it with blocks of iron, and that's where you find raw iron, there in Georgia, by that gouge. He then put molten copper on top of it to protect it from rust. And Gog and Magog could neither penetrate nor could they scale. They could neither penetrate nor could they scale. A jinn a gin can fly over. That's why. A jinn, you can't prevent a jinn by building, building a barrier. He can fly over. Jinn travel through the sky easily. Jinn travel to different dimensions of space and time. So, Gog and Magog can't be jinn. They have to be human beings. They can't be angels. They have to be human beings. When will you wake up? Human beings don't live in the interior of the earth. Nobody, you know? They live on earth. Walakum fil ardi mustaqarrun wa mata'un ilakheen. Human beings live on the surface of the earth. That's where they normally live. So don't come with this nonsense that they're down in the interior of the earth. No. Um, after he built the barrier, and now Gog and Magog could neither penetrate nor could they scale. He said, Hadha rahmatu mi rabbi. This is an act of kindness from my Lord. For إِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ رَبِّ جَاءَ لَهُ دَكَّةَ وَكَانَ وَعْدُ رَبِّ حَقَّةَ Well, when that time comes, أَخِرُ الزَّمَانَ of which my Lord has won, Allah is going to cause this barrier to be broken, broken up, destroyed, come in ruins. And at that time, the warning of my Lord will come to pass. That's in the Quran, that's Surah al kaf what does it mean then, Karnain? Two ages. Answer. When the barrier comes down and Gog and Magog are released, then you have to connect the dots. You have to be able to interpret the Quran that an age is going to come 
which is going to be the opposite of the previous age of Zulkarnain. That Gog and Magog are going to have power because the Hadith al-Qudsi, Allah says, are created creatures of mine so powerful that none but I can destroy them, Sahih Muslim. But they use the power not like Zulkarnain, who punishes the oppressor. They use the power to oppress. That's precisely what the world experienced when modern Western civilization came into being. You don't believe me? Wait until you are in the grave. And then you remember Imran Hussein. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. When Gog and Magog are released, they will use power to oppress. Instead of using power to assist, to punish the oppressor, they will use power to oppress. And they will use power to target those who have faith and who live, would live lives of righteousness. Yes, that is the second age, the age when Gog and Magog are released. But when Gog and Magog are released, then in the region of the Black Sea, power will once again emerge. And that power would rest on foundations of faith. That is the second of the two currents. The region of the Black Sea, which will rest on the foundations of faith, will again do to Gog and Magog what was done the first time. Do you understand me? Is power now re re being restored in the region of the Black Sea? Look at Crimea and see. Yes, power is coming back again to the region of the Black Sea. And the power which is returning to the Black Sea is power which is resting on the foundations of faith, you dumb dumb. It's so difficult for me. I have taught this subject so many times, so many times, so many times, but my critics can't understand. No, they can't. That power is rest being restored in the region of the Black Sea. And it is power which is resting on the foundations of faith. Who then are Gog and Magog? You know who that power is in the, Red sea, in the Black Sea. Because Russia sim just now recovered Crimea. The biggest setback that the Judeo-Christian Zionist Alliance ever achieved in their 100 years of history since the Zionist movement was established in 1897 was the loss of Crimea. Russia recovered Crimea. Russia is now returning to Orthodox Christian roots and foundations, and we are pleased about it. You are displeased. You are displeased, but we are pleased about it. Thank Allah for that. You can go your way. Yes, go your way. We are proud and happy that our Christian brothers are returning to Christianity, in Orthodox Christianity, yes. And that they are re recovering the Christian way of life. Over there in your part of the world, a man can marry a man and get a marriage certificate. But not in a hundred years, not in Russia. That Russia is returning away from com communism, away from the Soviet Union, which was created by the Zionist Alliance returning to Christianity, and we are happy about that. We are proud about that. We celebrate the fact that our Christian brothers are returning to Christianity. And that is where power is located today. Yes, power is returning to the region of the Black Sea. I don't need to mention the name of Putin. No! He can go and someone else can come to replace him. That will not change the fact that power is being restored to the region of the Black Sea. And that power is resting on the foundations of faith. And that power is being used to punish the oppressor and to seek to help those who are oppressed and those who have faith and who will live lives of righteousness. And so in the same way that Gog and Magog were checkmated the first time with the barrier, we are saying to you that Gog and Magog are going to be checkmated again one more time. So who are Gog and Magog? Before we end, let's answer that question. Who are Gog and Magog? 
That's what the rabbis wanted to know. The answer is located in the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya. But you have to interpret the Quran. The Quran of a town or a city. Qariya. And he destroyed that town or city. And having destroyed it, he expelled the people of that town or city. And having expelled them, he put a ban on them that they can never return to reclaim that town as their own. وَحَرَامٌ بَعْلَوْزُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرِيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ no, they can never return to reclaim that town as their own. No. Hatta. Until? Until when? Iza futi hatya ajuja wa ma'ajuja. Until Gog and Magog are released. Not ba'atha. When Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, Allah sends ba'atha. This is not ba'atha to send. This is futiha to release. Will you understand you dum dum? These critics of mine, they will never understand. When Gog and Magog are released, is a footy hat, When Gog and Magog are released, meaning Allah has broken, brought down the barrier. Brought down the barrier, and Gog and Magog are released. And they spread out in all directions. Then this power resting on the foundations of godlessness, which are used to oppress, will take over the world, and you have the world order of Gog and Magog, which is what we have today. Then you see these people being brought back to the town. Which town is it? Answer, Imran Hussein is saying to you, and I'm, I'm not the only one. My teacher, Dr. Maulana Muhammad Fadl Rahman Ansari, said the same thing. Dr. Muhammad Iqbal said the same thing. I'm not the only one. Jerusalem. When the Jews are brought back to Jerusalem, to recover it as their own, and a state of Israel is restored in the, in, holy, in the Holy Land, then you know those who brought them back are God, God and Magog. That is your modern Western civilization, a Judeo-Christian alliance which controls power in modern Western civilization. They are Gog and Magog. You don't believe me? Then wait until you're questioned in the grave. I thank you. May Allah put it in your hearts to be able to understand the Quran and may you make the effort with sincerity in your hearts to study the Quran but you will not be able to study the Quran the Quran will not open its pages to you until you recite the Quran regularly and the Quran cannot be translated to any other languages no it cannot there's only one Quran and it is in Arabic Alhamdulillah for that so if you are to recite the Quran, it has to be in Arabic. If you do not know how to study, to read it in Arabic, go and learn. Allah will make it easy for you if you make the effort. This program will be repeated on Thursday, inshallah, Thursday night at 9 p.m. I pray that you will recite the Quran regularly, every day, and try to recite the whole Quran. If you never hear from me again, remember this. Try to recite the whole Quran cover to cover at least once a month. And if you remain faithful to the Quran, one day Allah will open the Quran for you. And from the Quran,